What's the difference between an inset pocket and an inseam pocket? Yes, an inset is a traditional jean pocket or a traditional trouser pocket. It's set into the main field of the fabric, but it still is interacting with a seam, usually your out seams and your waist seam. An inseam pocket are elephant ear pockets, which are totally inside the pant, non-visible from the outside. And if you turn them inside out like you're turning out your pockets, they look like you've got elephant ears on your hips. A welt pocket all happens on the inside of the field, but it is a slot pocket. So if you can do a welt pocket, then no pocket is off limits to you either because it won't matter if you have a seam to interact with the pocket or not. You just cut a slash wherever you want the pocket and you do the welt pocket or the slot pocket at that point. Uh, same with zippers. If you decide to put a zipper somewhere, you just cut a slash, do a welt, throw the zipper in there. Easy peasy. So. At that point, it doesn't matter what style lines you have, what seam lines you have, what's available to you. You can put it anywhere. But to do a traditional pocket, the book, uh, we're working out of the women's wear book. The women's wear book is doing a traditional trouser pocket, which is a long diagonal slash over here on the side. They're a nice look if you are not hippie and you don't move. Otherwise, if you sit down, all your stuff falls out of your well, all my stuff falls out of my pockets, and every time I move, I've got bubble butt on my hips, and I hate that. So I don't particularly care for them. I like the traditional jean pocket, which is more of comes a horizontal line instead of a diagonal line across the hip, but you can choose whatever you want. The mechanics are the same, regardless of what your aesthetic is. Just make sure that your aesthetic matches your pattern work, which means whatever picture you draw in your glossary, make sure that it is matching the work you're doing in your pattern. We are going to need a couple of mechanics in here just to kind of know where things are. So you need to know where your longitudinal line is, which is making me crazy. So you need to know where your crease line is. And on the front, it comes down straight from the dart the first dart closest to the center. We need to know where the crotch line is. We need to know where your hip line is. So those reference marks are gonna be pretty important. You need to think about your aesthetics. You need to think about your hand. You need to think about the function of this pocket. Is it to hold an iPhone X Plus? Because otherwise you need a bigger opening. Are you wanting it to be a trouser pocket? Where is your hip line in relation to that? And when you sit down, where is the gap gonna be? Do you want the pocket bag to be really big and huge? Well then, if you're extending down here below the crotch line, then when you sit down, your stuff is past the crease of your leg bend, not before the crease in your leg bend, and it can make sitting uncomfortable for long periods of time. If your keys and wallet and phone are all down here on your leg crease instead of in the upper body crease when you're sitting. So you need to kind of think about that. I have seen pants where the pocket bag extends all the way to the center front. I wouldn't recommend it. It's construction nightmare and it makes the zipper not lay flat. So I like to stop about where my crease line is, which is why it's important to have it on there. Just so you kind of know on the body where that is. So if you're looking at the mannequin, we can see that we've already got style lines built into the mannequins. This style line or princess line that's coming down here, this is equivalent to where your crease line is going to be. So you know where your waistline is. You can see where your hip line would be. You can see where your crease line is. Where do you want that pocket to be sitting? How big do you need the opening? How, if you have to put your hand in your pocket, cup something and scoop it out of your pocket, how much space do you need to be able to get a hand opening in there? Or are you trying to reach in there with two fingers because you made your opening not quite big enough? Does that make sense? It's a whole lot of thought process that happens at the beginning end of this pocket. So if I were going to make a traditional trouser pocket, I know that I don't want to interfere with the crease line. I know I'm coming in here at the diagonal. I know my diagonal, I'd want to stop it before hip line so that everything doesn't fall out of my pocket. And I know that my hand span is about five and a half inches, which means I would need that space to come in here. So 
I'm not following the instructions on the book at this point because it's all do two inches here and half an inch here and have this scoop here. And I think pockets are a bit more personal than that. So we're just gonna run through theory. The numbers are gonna be very personal to you depending on how you want it to look. So if I were gonna do a traditional trouser pocket, I know I'm gonna stop it short of hip line. So I'm gonna stop it about right there. I know I have a five and a half inch span, a little bit more if I'm cupping it to get it out of there. Cut that in half for half scale. I'm just gonna plan on a six inch opening. Cut it in half for half scale. I need at least three inches. So I've got one, two, three inches here, which means I could move it up here. I could have my span be right here and still have plenty of room for my hand to be able to get in that opening. Does that make sense? Now on the pant themselves, this becomes an unusable piece. I am not going to black it out because I'm gonna need it later. So I'm just gonna highlight the unusable piece. On the pant itself, this would get discarded. And this becomes your new pant shape. Okay? Then your pant front is finished. You need to develop the pockets. So I would take an additional piece of paper. I would think about what I want my pocket bag to look like. Now, knowing that this crease line, I don't really like my pockets to go any farther than this because then it creates bulk on the front of the abdomen. And for me as a woman, I don't particularly care for that. Um, I've had a pair of pants that my pocket bag, like I said, comes all the way over. It's just unusable space. It's not really conducive to anything. So I think I'm going to have my pocket bag start somewhere between these two darts. And I'm just going to draw in kind of like a rough. I'm not shaping the pocket bag yet. I'm just putting in like a rough outline of where my usable space is which is kind of in here. This is where I'm thinking, where I need to be sitting for this pocket bag, okay? I don't want it to extend below the crotch line. When I'm standing up, I put my hands in my pockets. I don't really like my pockets to go any farther than that, which is just slightly below hip line. So, slightly below hip line. You can see I'm just minimizing up my usable space. When I sit down, because this is a trouser pocket, it is on the diagonal. I sit down that diagonal gaps and stuff falls out. I know I want the pocket bag to come into the pant just a little bit and then drop down below. Maybe not that extreme. Drop down below so that I have a stop gap between the edge of the diagonal and the bottom of the pocket. So it kind of holds things in just a little bit. So the bottom of my opening isn't bottom of pocket bag. I want my pocket bag to extend down the side seam beyond that and then scoop into a pocket bag because that helps hold stuff in my pockets. So whether you want your pocket bag round, whether you want it square, whatever that is, at that point, that becomes my pocket bag. So on a separate piece of paper, I would trace that piece. Okay. Now I've got a dart in here. Do I want a dart in my pocket bag? In the pocket itself, do I want the dart? Probably not. So I would use pivot method as I'm working through this and I would close that dart. Does that make sense? So, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo. so right here I'd use pivot method and I'd close this. And that becomes my pocket lining. This is the piece that is sewn to the front of the pant. Is everybody in here wearing jeans except for me? 
Yeah. So stand up, turn your pocket inside out. This is the piece that is against the fabric and away from you. So this piece is this, this piece. That's the piece we made, not this piece. Nope. This piece. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not this piece, it's the piece that's right against the pants. Not that piece, it's this piece right there. Okay, so that's why those curves or openings, the diagonal, the curve, whatever curve you're putting in, it's why this line and this line have to match because those get sewn right side together for your pocket lining and your pocket, your pant front to go together. Now you still need an additional piece. You need the back of the pocket bag. You can do this in two pieces or you can extend this pocket bag out and make it one piece. But this piece has to complete your side seam, which means First of all, I'm gonna use pivot method and I'm going to close, crap. I'm going to close my dart. Then I'm gonna trace the rest of my pocket bag. And then I'm gonna trace the complete out seam of my pant including the discarded piece. So I have pocket facing, I have pocket lining, I have pant front. This piece gets cut off the pant front. You're ending up with all of those pieces to make a complete pocket.